One of the continued hottest reality shows on television can teach you a lot about how to influence the actions of others. Let's have ourselves some pocket-sized pep talk because the fact is that success and failure often come down to three things. And I'll tell you what they are. A pocket-sized pep talk, the podcast that can help energize your business and your life with a quick, inspiring message. Now, here's your host, Rob Jealous. Remember when reality shows were fresh and new? I can recall watching the very first episode of Survivor, and I was hooked. I've not missed an episode since the show first aired. In fact, I've applied to be on the show several times. Always loved the show because it reflected real-world social issues. Then came the imitators. Soon, like most people, I grew tired of the onslaught of reality shows. I rejected every other reality show until the first episode of Shark Tank aired August 9th, 2009. The show instantly grabbed my attention because it reflected real-world issues, especially real-world business issues. Watching people pitch their ideas in front of a handful of potential investors, that can teach you a lot about how to influence those around you. If you watch carefully, you'll see a couple of common moves on display. In fact, it usually comes down to focusing on three things. One, focus on that opening. You got one chance to make a first impression, as the old shampoo commercial once said. Those are wise words, and that first impression can be defined as roughly 45 seconds. Watch the first 45 seconds of the weaker presentations, and you'll quickly learn what's in it for the presenter. It's a tough world out there, and quite frankly, most people who are being approached with a new idea have no interest in what's in it for you, the presenter. They want to know what's in it for them. An amazing example of this cold, hard fact was illustrated in an episode of Shark Tank. Some years ago, a young entrepreneur was asked, please take a moment and tell us exactly why we should invest in this idea. It was a fair and honest question. And the response was just as fair and honest with a beautiful, sentimental piece of music playing in the background. The entrepreneur gave an emotional and heartfelt response. She told the sharks how important it was to her to be successful, to believe in your idea, and to show her children what hard work and dedication could deliver. Brought a tear to everyone's eye, but the sharks weren't reacting. Unmoved, one shark responded this way. That's a good story but it's not a good reason for us to invest. Another shark asked this, can you please answer the question again, but this time tell us what's in it for us. This time the entrepreneur's response was a little different. With no music or fanfare, the entrepreneur responded like this. Well, I have a $1.5 million order from Sam's Club I can't fulfill because I don't have the distribution to handle it. With your help, I can fulfill that order. Almost instantly, Shark Mark Cuban offered the entrepreneur exactly what she was asking for with no negotiation whatsoever. In five years of watching the show before, I had never ever seen a deal struck that fast with no negotiation. All right, let's talk about number two. Focus on engaging others. It's always interesting to listen to the world's vision of influence because we're exposed to so many bad salespeople. We naturally believe that the more we talk, the more influence we have over others. That might be the stereotypical view, but the truth is that nothing could be further from the truth. The reality is that if you say it, others tend to doubt it. If they say it, they tend to believe it. Why do we believe that when we walk into a room to influence others, we need to do this by telling people 
what we know. Watch the average pitch and you'll see most attention being given to the entrepreneur's statements about his or her particular idea. Watch a truly spectacular sales conversation and you'll see an enormous amount of attention given to the way in which the entrepreneur engages the sharks. This can be done through well-thought-out questions or through involving the sharks in a creative way. One thing is certain and on display. The more the sharks are involved in the conversation, the more they tend to like the idea. Please notice that I said conversation, not pitch. All right, another one. Focus on not just the words, but also the tune. The final piece of this influence puzzle, and probably the most forgotten, is the tune. And by tune, I'm not talking about the words that are involved in the conversation. I'm talking about the way in which those words are communicated. I hope I've got this pronunciation right. But Albert Mahbrabian, a professor of communications, once did a study that illustrated this point. As he looked at why a message might have an emotional impact, he tried to determine if the response was based on a gut reaction, what was said, or how it was said. The study concluded that only 7% came from the words, 38% from nonverbal cues, and 55% from our facial expressions. When I look at these numbers, it points out some important things we need to remember. Firstly, when we're trying to influence others, we need to focus on the words as well as how we deliver those words. We need to think about the passion we must show in the delivery of these words. Secondly, it reminds me a lesson my dad reinforced on more than one occasion. When he asked me to do something, he noticed if I wasn't quite as quick or genuine in my response, maybe throwing out a, yeah, I'll do it. He provided me with a rather dramatic and loud reminder that he wasn't fooled by my answer. When I protested and said, I said I'd do it, he fired back, not what you said. It's how you said it. Well, a lot's riding on your ability to connect with those whose minds you're looking to change. And when it comes to the art of influencing others, a lot can be learned from the Shark Tank. It's all a matter of focusing on the right things. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please rate and recommend it on iTunes, Outcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more information on this show and Rob at Jollis.com.